Hello there, this is Dimitris Christou and we're ready to move on to part 4. This is the result of the third part and now that we're done with it, as you can see, you can select the frame and grab it and move it around. So now that we're done, I'll hit B on my keyboard and select all our objects here and hit M to move them to layer 4. Okay, we now have our empty layer 1, we only have our camera here and I'll hit Shift S and click cursor to center. Okay, now I'll hit Shift A and add mesh a plane. I'll hit the Tab key to switch from object to edit mode. And I'll also hit 7 on my main keypad to switch to top all of you. Okay, and I'll hit S to scale my plane down. And again, I'm doing this in edit mode so that the uh, actual size of the plane is not affected. It will stay at 1. So I'm scaling down the plane. Okay, and let's see. I'll also scale it down on the X axis, so S and X. At about there. And I'll hit 0 on my mirror keypad to look through the camera perspective view. And I think I'll scale it down a bit more. I'm scaling the whole object here. I'll scale it down to 0 0.5, OK. And now I'll hit Z and Y to move it on the Y axis. And again, I'm moving it while I'm in edit mode. And I'll move it up at about 1.8. OK. Now I've moved my uh, plane here on the Y axis while in edit mode because I want the center of the object. You can see that little dot here. I want the center of my, my object to stay in the center of the world. So I'll be using uh, an array for this one and what we'll actually create here is the loading circle thing. So we got our plane here and we'll move to the modifiers panel and click add modifier and we'll generate an array. Okay. Now for our array here we'll also need an empty. I'll hit shift A and add an empty. And it's empty point zero zero one. Let's rename it to empty load. Okay, so we know which is which because we get some empties here for our objects. And now I'm going to select the plane here and I'm going to deselect relative offset and click object offset and of course set the empty as a controlling object for uh, our plane here. So I'm selecting empty load okay and all we have to do now is right click to select the empty and we, you see we have the transform options here for location, rotation and scale and if we now rotate our empty around the Z axis here, let's move it to negative value. You can see that it's set to minus one degree here, and you can see how it all works. Now, since the empty is rotating, uh, the array modifier follows the rotation of the empty. Now, I'm selecting my plane here, and all I have to do now is increase the count and as you may imagine, since we have the uh, rotation per object set to 1 degree, we'll need a count of 360. You can see it here, 359 and 360 is what completes the circle here. Okay, now, 0 on my main keypad to switch to camera perspective view. And I'll hit tab and just hit S and Y to scale my plane here on the Y axis. Let's make it a bit shorter. Okay, and about there. Now tab key again, and we have the uh, the array here set up. Let's add some animation to it. Okay. Now for this one, I'm uh, clicking here for the render panel, and I'll set the end frame to 360. Okay, and we want to uh, have one 
piece of plane here appearing for every frame. So normally we will click here to move back to to move to the end of the frames to frame 360 and let's move to the modifiers panel and while my cursor here is above the count I'll hit the I key to insert a keyframe for the count. You can see now that the color changes and that means that we have a keyframe for the count here for our array. Now back to frame 1, I'm clicking this icon here to move back to the first frame and I'll set the count to 1. Okay, and you can see now that the uh, count here is green. If I hit the I key while my cursor is above, you can see that it turns to this uh, blue color here, and that means that we have a keyframe for frame 1. The array count is set to 1. Now let's play back to see how it looks. And I think it looks pretty interesting. Now you can always set the uh, end keyframe to, to 180 so that you have two uh, RA pieces uh, appearing for each frame. So it'll be faster. So feel free to fiddle with the settings here. And I think we're done with that. One more thing we have to add a material. I'm moving to the materials panel and click new. And I'll change the name of this material to load circle. Okay. And I'll decrease the specular intensity, I'll bring it down to zero. And I'll click shadeless. And I think we're good. And I'll also add a texture to this material to the load circle. Click new for a new texture and set the type to blend. You can see the blend texture here and of course I'm going to change the colors and add a ramp to it. Now I'm adding a ramp. You can see right here I hope you've used the uh, ramp option before. What I'm going to do is select this uh, left color here. It's black. You can see it. I'll click it and I want to set the uh, alpha value here up to 1 because we want both our colors to appear on our texture. So everything, every color here is visible and I'm going to change them. I'm going to set the black one to be a strong red color and I'm going to change the white one into a blue one. At about there. Now I've made some tests about applying the RAM here correctly on the, our array and I found that the better way to do it is to change the progression from linear to let's see what it was, it was radial? Yes, it's radial. You can see right here that it starts from blue in a radial way it moves up to red. Okay now I'll hit F12 to render an image so we can see how it all looks and I don't know if you can see it and I really hope you can we have some weird thing here going on and for our uh, ramp texture here and I'm guessing that the issue here is that I'll hit the escape key I'm guessing that the issue with this one is that we've moved the uh, the plane here while in edit mode so the center is here but the object the object data the actual object is up here so we are having some issues and I really found that the easiest way to fix this is to move down here to the offset for the texture and set the Y value let's set it to minus one let's bring it down so the object is brought up on the Y axis so I'm uh, offsetting my texture down just to make sure that it all stays within the circle and again if I'm wrong feel free to correct me. Now I'll render another image to see how it looks and I think it looks pretty fine. You can see it starting from here and I'll also let's see in texture options here and let's see it affects color and I think we're okay.
Okay, now I'll hit the escape key. Time to add some details here for our object. I'll hit Shift A to add mesh circle. And you can see our circle here. I'll change the amount of vertices from 32 to 128. And some said that I use uh, vertex based circles while I could use uh, Bezier circles or stuff like that. And I think you're correct, you can easily work with uh, Bezier curves uh, to create the circles, to create some shapes. Feel free to use the way you find uh, easier or you find fit to work with. I find it easier personally to work with uh, vertex based objects. So we have our circle here, hit the tab key and hit S to scale it up. Just staying in. And I'll hit the E key to extrude. Right mouse button to cancel any movement for my extruded vertices. And I'll hit S to scale it down. Right about there. Now I'm hitting the tab key. And for this one, for the inner circle here, I'll add the, the white material. Okay. And I'll also add some text. I'll hit Shift A to add text. And moving here to the text options, to the object data for the text object. And let's change the text a bit. I'm hitting the tab key to switch from object to edit mode for the text. And I'll type in loading. OK, tab key again. And of course, I'm going to center my text. And I'll hit the S key to scale it down a bit. And I'll also hit Z and Y to move it on the Y axis. Let's try to center it a bit more. And about there. OK. And I'm also going to change the offset a bit. I want to make it a bit thinner. And I think we're good at about there. And again for the loading here for the text, I'm going to add the white material. Okay. So let's render an image to see how it looks. I think it looks pretty nice. You can also you can always add more stuff to your loading here. You can hit let's say you can hit Shift D to duplicate our circle here and hit the Tab key and hit the A key to select all and S to scale it up. OK, now Tab key again. You can also add some selected text. I'm right clicking to select the text, hit Shift D to create a duplicate. I'll move it down on the Y axis and hit the tab key. I'll add some sort of code here. HDXFTY something and some numbers. Don't know if I said it before but most of the times those panels, those data displays are full of crazy numbers that mean or affect nothing at all. So for this one, as you can see, we have the offset option that messes up with our numbers here. So I'll set the offset back to 0. And of course, I'll bring the size down at about here. Let's set it to 0 0.3. OK. And I think this is good. I'm going to add some character spacing. OK, at about here, or perhaps a bit, OK, now I don't like how the loading here is positioned, I'll move it a bit, I'm right clicking to select it, Z and X to move it on the X axis, and let's move it at about here, OK. Now I'm hitting F12 to render again. And you can see how it looks. And again, we can add more stuff, more text, you know, some shapes, rotating shapes. We've seen 
how we can animate things using uh, noise and stuff like that. I'm hoping that we'll see more. We'll uh, move on with part with part five. For now, I'm going to save this one. File save as and save it as stylist display display four. Okay. So this is part four. I hope you liked it and learned a bit of a thing or two from it. You can always uh, use the uh, array modifiers in a straight way just by ignoring, let's say we'll ignore the object offset here and use the relative offset and again what we're having here, you can have a horizontal loading uh, panel here and again back to frame 1 and hit play and you can see how this one moves so this is it and thanks for watching